Today I want to take a look at parsing InfoPath attachments out of XML into a document library. So here we're looking at a PowerShell script and within this script we have some code that will leverage PMP to connect out into SharePoint Online and download XML files. Within those XML files are binary payload for InfoPath attachments. So here you can see the PowerShell code loads the PowerShell PMP module. It has some scope about a site with a form library source and a destination document library. We'll come take a look at our site. Over here on site contents, we do have a form library for source. There are two InfoPath XMLs in this form library. Both of them contain an attachment in embedded format. It's a base64. And one of the ways we can look at that is by downloading the file. Okay, I downloaded the two XML files locally. We'll come back over to VS Code, take a look at them, and sure enough, you can see right here, my field one in the XML is a base64 for the file attachment. And even over here on the right hand side, you can see that it scrolls for pages and pages. But what this content is, is the, the body of an attachment that's embedded within InfoPath. And it's saved in the InfoPath document, it's embedded into the file, and it's saved with base64 encoding. And here you can actually see we have two. There's a my field one and a my field two. So we have an attachment above and below. So this InfoPath form contains some file attachments. Now opening the XML file with InfoPath on the desktop will show us those attachments as well. So here we can see the InfoPath client downloading the XML file, and there it is. Test DOC, test XLS, and I've got a third one for attachment. So these are file attachment controls on the XSN which is the InfoPath design canvas. Now, why do we need all these things? Well, the attachments are kind of hard to work with. We have a lot of older data that's saved in InfoPath. We'd like it to be more accessible, more manageable. So maybe you do a migration, and at the end of that, you want to clean things up and go ahead and parse out those attachments for separate storage. So if you have some legacy InfoPath data that's saved as XML files, and you know that within there are attachments, you might want to bring those attachments out to make them more available for other um, design patterns. You want to do things with Power Apps. You want to look at the attachments directly, set up document library views. Well, right now, the file attachments being embedded, pretty hard to work with. So over here on the PowerShell code, we have a method that it's most simple is going to download, parse, and upload. Those are the three key functions. And we're going to make a temporary folder for housing the XML, and then we're going to parse out the base64 as a freestanding binary, turn around and upload it. The key commands that you see here are add PMP file for uploading, add PMP folder to create a destination folder, and on the parse XML function, we bring in the base64 data, we parse out the attachment file name. There's a lot of funny stuff here with byte arrays and uint32, but the key here is to get the name of the attachment. In our example, it was test doc, test xls. These are the names of the attachments. Once we have the name of the attachment, we want to go ahead and get the body and write the bytes for the body of that attachment. And all of this is using a base64 memory stream and byte arrays. So this function is leveraging a lot of .NET to parse the base64 into a binary file. And then this one will go ahead and get property files, see how many XMLs there are on that source form library, and it'll start downloading as file. So that's downloading the XMLs. We have parsing the XML, and then we have uploading the attachment. That's what we're looking at for our PowerShell. So over here, we'll go ahead and switch to the command line and we'll execute the script. It currently has no connection. And now it successfully established a connection. 
and downloaded a couple of temp files. Now here you can see that it made a local temp folder. I'll go ahead and take a look at that folder just to see what we have. And you can see it downloaded the two XMLs and then it also created a folder for each one. Within those folders are where it's going to store the attachment for the XPath location we provided. One of the important parts of the PowerShell function is the XPath location where to find the attachments. And that is going to be declared over here on line 42 as part of the parsing of info path. That this second parameter here, that is where to get the attachment payload, myfields.field1. And if you remember, when we looked inside the data, there's field1, and that's part of my fields. So when you think about XPath notation and what the namespace looks like, we are going into my fields and then field one to retrieve the data. And that's an essential part of the PowerShell is which attachment control we want to parse out. So that put everything into a temp folder locally. It turned around and uploaded it as well. So if we go back over to our site and we check the shared documents library, we see one folder was created for each info path, and within it is the attachment file that we're looking for. And this is the user experience we want to have, where we can come in, we can browse the data, we can see the attachments, and it's all part of a document library. So now the attachments are more accessible, we can open them directly with Word, Excel. It's not the same as the form library, where the attachments are more obscure they're kind of buried inside the XML content. There's just not a lot of good ways to, to look at the attachment data. So I hope this is helpful. A uh, little bit of a tour of a script showing how to download those XMLs, parse the attachment, and then upload them to a document library. Thanks for watching.